Honduras holds primary elections to elect candidates for November's presidential election. Bolivians continue to rally against former interim president Janine Añez. And German Chancellor Angela Merkel's party suffers heavy losses in two key regional elections. Hello and welcome to Telesur English. I am Estefania Bravo from the headquarters of Quito in Ecuador. This is from the South. Honduras has held primary elections to choose candidates for November elections to replace outgoing President Juan Orlando Hernández. President Hernández's eight years in power has been increasingly mirrored up by corruption allegations. The primary elections come just days after a U.S. prosecutor accused them of helping smuggle tons of cocaine into the U.S. Among the candidates are two men being investigated for alleged corruption and an ex-convict previously sentenced for money laundering in the U.S. Results of the primary elections in which 4.8 million Hondurans are eligible to vote are expected next week. And Bolivians have rallied outside the building of the country's special force for the fight against crime, where former interim president Janine Añez is being held following her arrest. Shouting justice, La Paz residents have demanded that Añez be punished for participating in a coup that ousted former president Evo Morales. Demonstrators included relatives of some of the 36 people killed when Morales supporters clashed with security forces during the crisis. A judge was due to decide whether to grant Agnes house arrest or remain her in custody while the investigation continues. In Guatemala, relatives of the 16 migrants killed in Mexico have begun burying their loved ones. Family members and neighbors of El Fego Miranda Diaz accompanied his coffin through the streets of his, of his hometown and buried him on Saturday afternoon. The remaining murdered migrants are set to be buried on Sunday as their families wanted more time to mourn. On January 22nd, Mexican authorities reported the discovery of 19 charred bodies inside a burnt van in Camargo next to the U.S. border, an area scarred for years by wars between rivals and Mexican cartels. And Mexico has received the third shipment of the COVID-19 vaccines. A batch of one million Chinese Sinovac vaccines have arrived in Mexico on Saturday. The Mexican government has inoculated older adults in poor areas of the country as part of its vaccination campaign that began in December. According to authorities, with the arrival of these doses, there are already more than 6.4 million vaccines that have landed in the nation. CARICOM has been allocated 1.8 million COVID-19 vaccines through the African Medical Supplies Platform to distribute among the Caribbean nations. Barbados Foreign Minister Dr. Jerome Walcott said that his country is slated to be allocated 56,000 vaccines via this platform. Trinidad and Tobago also signed up to this initiative. Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley announced that the Twin Island Nation has secured 226,000 vaccines thanks to this offer. Former Peruvian President Martin Vizcarra has claimed a foul play against his new candidacy for Congress after a prosecutor requested preventive prison for him. The prosecutor asked for 18 months of preventive prison for Vizcarra for allegedly taking bribes while, the, while he was a governor. A court in Lima is set to analyze that request. The former president is being investigated for, for allegedly accepting bribes of around 619,000 US dollars that he received from two local construction companies while he was governor of the Moquinewa region from 2011 to 2014. Last November, Vizcarra was removed from presidency by the parliament, which used the prosecutor's investigation as its main argument. Less than a month before elections, 
someone asks for preempted prison against a candidate of a party, which is the first option for Congress. As you have seen in the polls, I have walked all Lima since March 1st, and we have received an enormous support by the population. We're taking a very short break. Now join us again after this. And also, don't forget to follow me on my Twitter account, at Ibravo Telesur, for more news. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South, more news now. People in the Central African Republic have gone to the polls to vote in the second round of the legislative elections. Most of the polling stations had short lines compared to the first round of voting held last December. The elections come as the country battles a rebel insurgency which officials described as an attempted coup. Last year, just before the elections, armed groups attempted to disrupt the voting process and overthrow the government but were later neutralized by the country's troops. I came here to vote because this is my country. If I don't vote, I am not a good citizen. You have to come in large numbers to vote. Our country has suffered a lot. We need people to help us. You have to come in large numbers to vote. Chad President Idris Debi has called for unity ahead of the April presidential elections. Debi kicked off his campaign for a sixth term on Saturday, March 13th, calling for unity after rival protests were banned and broken up. The first rally since the start of the official election period on Thursday was held by Debi's patriotic salvation movement at a packed stadium in the capital, Unjadima. On Thursday, three opposition candidates quit the race ahead of the April 11th ballot, with one of them saying the climate was not good enough for fair and transparent presidential elections. Their withdrawal leaves half a dozen candidates, including Debbie, who has ruled the country since 1990. At least 19 Nigerian soldiers have been killed in a jihadist attack in the state of Borno. Nigerian security sources have reported that jihadist fighters ambushed a military convoy, killing 15 soldiers and four militia fighters. 13 soldiers have also been wounded in the attack. The convoy was on its way to Gudumbali for a military operation against the insurgents when it came under fire. The body of late Ivory Coast Prime Minister Hamid Bakayoko has arrived in the capital Abidjan from Germany. Popularly known as Hambak, Bakayoko died in Germany from cancer at age 56. Four days after legislative elections that went ahead of peacefully and handed victory to the ruling RHDP party, Bakayoko died from cancer on Thursday at a German hospital where he had gone to seek treatment. He took over as prime minister in July of last year from Amadou Gon Koulibaly, who died after returning to the Ivory Coast from two months in France, where he had been treated for heart problems. In Iraq, security forces have used hunting ammunition to disperse protesters, demanding the resignation of a regional governor. Demonstrators blocked a highway in Najaf on Sunday and gathered on the main roads leading to regional governor Luai al yasiris office at the governor building. Protesters called on the governor and his two deputies to resign because of corruption. Several people were injured during the clashes with the riot police and were taken to nearby hospitals. Myanmar's junta has declared martial law over two townships in its largest city, Yangon. The announcement comes after the area saw at least 15 killed in crackdowns by security forces against anti-coup protesters on Sunday. We demand the intervention of the army to cope with these repressive forces because they are using homemade hand grenades and hunting rifles. Now I have been shot by a hunting ammo. 
Despite military crackdowns, anti-coup demonstrators has pushed on with protesters as Myanmar neared its seventh week under military rule. Hundreds of protesters gathered in Insane Township to rebuild a barricade made of bricks and bamboo poles holding signs reading, We don't accept a military coup. The country has been in turmoil since the military ousted civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi from power in a February 1st coup. Apart from daily civilian protests, a group of elected MPs, many of whom are in hiding, had also formed a shadow parliament to denounce the military regime. The Junta Security Forces have staged daily crackdowns against demonstrators calling for a return to democracy, deploying tear gas, rubber bullets and live rounds to quell anti-coup protesters who have, who have seen more than 70 killed. I saw the fallen heroes give their lives. I don't want to think that I'm afraid and I want to stay safe at home. I'm going out on the streets as a citizen, as a woman, so I want to stand with justice and fairness. We have to fight for our future. I don't accept the military coup. At the moment, sometimes we are running and hiding from the violent crackdown. I was arrested once, but people came to help me escape from the security forces and I was released. We're taking one last short break now, don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. More news now. In the U.S., at least two people have been killed and 13 others got wounded in a gunfire that erupted in Chicago. Officers responded at around 4.40 a.m. local time to a shooting that most likely took place at a party on Chicago's south side. Those shots were between the ages of 20 to 44. Seven of the wounded were taken to hospitals in serious to critical condition. Police investigators are still seeking a possible motive, but they said four guns were recovered covered at the scene. However, it is not yet clear where uh, where more than one person fired shots. Uh, our detectives are continuing to uh, do their preliminary investigation in their interviews, but several of the uh, witnesses who were wounded are still in surgery and have yet to be interviewed. So more to come as far as uh, any kind of motive or any additional evidence. Uh, we are following up on several different leads that we are yet unable to confirm. In the U.S., hundreds of New Yorkers have taken to the streets to mark the one-year anniversary of the death of Breonna Taylor, a young black woman shot dead during a police raid. On a Saturday, Taylor's mother, Tamika Palmer, led hundreds marching behind a large purple banner with an illustration of Taylor's face chanting, No Justice, No Peace. On March 13, 2020, Breonna Taylor was shot and killed in her home by police officers who broke down on her door to serve a search warrant. Her death sparked protests across the country and became central to the racial reckoning last summer, with demonstrators demanding racial equality and police accountability. It also renewed conversations about police brutality against black women, who activists say are often overlooked and rarely get justice in their cases. Well, it's been a year since Brianna Taylor's death, and there's really no justice yet. And her death was really unnecessary. Um, her life needs to be valued. And it's important to be here and remind everyone that we haven't forgotten that justice still needs to be served. Especially as a white person, it's really important to stand up and have solidarity with the community and say, this is not right. I benefit from the privilege that I have, and I want to change that so that that kind of inequity doesn't exist. I know that if it was um, me in that apartment, I probably wouldn't have been shot and killed. German Chancellor Angela Merkel's center-right party has suffered heavy losses in two key regional elections. According to preliminary results, Merkel's center-right Christian Democratic Union, or CDU, is on track to score its worst ever result in the southwestern states of Baden-Württemberg and uh, Rhineland Palatine. In, well, in wealthy Baden-Württemberg, the CDU got 23%, while the Green Party held on the first place, getting more than 31% of the votes. In neighboring Rhineland, Palatine, 
2019, the CDU placed second with 25 to 26 percent of the vote, while the center-left SPD held on to its first place at 33 to 34 percent. As I have said before, an election victory in this form gives everyone a tailwind. Of course, I also spoke very quickly with Olaf Scholz, and I am very, very happy that we can actually show joy for the Social Democrats everywhere with this result. And that is certainly an important point for going into the Bundestag elections. The leader of Germany's Christian Democratic Union Party, Paul Siemiak, has conceded defeat in two in the two state elections. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, to put it bluntly, this is not a good election evening for the CDU. We would have liked different and better results in the state elections in Baden-Württemberg and rhineland palatinat Dutch police have used tear gas and water cannons to disperse anti-government protesters as the Netherlands gears up for general elections slated for Monday. Demonstrators gathered in The Hague to protest against the country's COVID-19 restrictions and denounced its country's Prime Minister Mark Rutte. Some of the protesters vowed to vote the Prime Minister out of office in Monday's election. The Dutch government implemented strict COVID-19 measures in October of last year, which included the closure of bars, restaurants and museums. Italy is facing a new wave of coronavirus infections and the government prepares to reinforce restri uh, restrictions in most of the country. Schools, restaurants and museums are expected to close from Monday in most regions after Italy recorded almost 26,000 new COVID-19 cases and another 373 deaths in the last 24 hours. Health authorities have agreed on new guidelines for the classification of red zones in which residents are urged to stay home except for emergencies, work and health reasons. Starting on Monday, every region with more than 250 cases per 100,000 inhabitants will automatically be labeled as a red zone. And with that story, we've come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at salisorenglish.net. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. We are on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Salisor English, I am Stefania Bravo. See you next time.